Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm coming back to y'all with yet another knife review, and this is one that I'm excited for. Now, I've owned a lot of budget knives, and I mean a lot of budget knives throughout the course of my life and throughout the course of this channel. I've reviewed quite a few of them here on this channel, many of which were under $15, uh, many were under $20, many were under $25. Generally speaking, I don't like to go above the uh, $40 price range with knives. I'm a very budget-conscious individual, and when I started the channel, I was a kid on an allowance budget. So I tend to try to make my videos aim towards that same budget constrained uh, audience. You know, people who are just, you know, they're younger individuals who are, you know, not have a lot of money laying around, so they can't spend a lot of money on knives. I try to aim towards those, uh, towards those viewers. I try to aim towards uh, the people who are just, you know, barely making it by paycheck to paycheck, but still want a hobby to help kind of break up the monotony. Uh, those are the people that I tend to aim, uh, aim towards with my reviews, and those are the ones who I tend to make my knife videos for. And this is possibly the best knife I've ever picked up for the $25 price range since I've been a collector and since I've been a reviewer, and that is the Sanren Mew produced Land Model 911. Now, I want to start this out by saying that there are different uh, variants on this knife. The 911, at this point in time, happens to be the, G the green G10 handled version. The 910 is a black G10 handled version with a different G10 pattern. And then there's the 9... Oh, I want to say it's the 912, which is a stainless steel frame lock. This is obviously a liner lock. And then there's a few variants on that, like the 9103. Uh, there's a black stonewashed version of the fra frame lock. They're all basically the same knife. Just one's a G10 liner lock, one's a stainless steel frame lock. Think of them like the CRKT Drifter in that way. You know, they came out with two versions. Whichever one you like best is going to be the one you go for. Personally, I went for the 911 because I love the green G10 handle. And I tend to prefer, uh, you know, non-frame locking knives. I will get a, uh, a frame lock version at some point for a separate review because I want to do a video showing uh, all the different steps of poor man Sabenza, Sabenza's that Sand Review has produced. But this is the one that I got, this is the one that I prefer. So let's go ahead and show off the packaging that it came in. Not much to show here, just says land, tactical knives, folding knife on that side, folding knife on that side. At the bottom we have some of our information, land 911 pocket knife, uh, army green G10 made in China. Nothing on either side here except the model number so they can see it on the shelf. And open the box, little little mini box with a plastic envelope in there. So, pretty simple packaging, gets right to the point. This is a budget knife, and it doesn't need a big fancy box. So let's go ahead and uh, start this review by talking about the elephant in the room, which is, yes, this is obviously a copy of a Chris Reeve Sabenza. Now, Sand Remove is known for their Model 710, which I still have here beautiful knife for the money. Uh, obviously, it's a very simplistic design, being a copy of a Sabenza to various degrees. There are some design cue differences with the 710, but this was always like the budget knife. Back in the day, this was like a $10 knife, 8CR 13 MOV blade, stainless steel frame lock, pretty solid pocket clip, though it does only carry tip down, which is a bit of a shame. I wish this was at least ambidextrous, but it's not. But this was always a great budget blade, and I hear they've even upgraded it now. I think they're using... Um, I've heard they went to 8CR 14 MOV as opposed to the 13 MOV in this one, and I also hear that supposedly now they're using Sandvik 12C27 in them, which is either an up uh, upgrade or a downgrade depending on the individual's cutting tasks. Uh, in my experience, the 12C27 of the Land 911 does hold an edge slightly better than the Sand Renmu 710, and it's also more rust resistant, so I do think it's a better steel personally. I've had some bad experiences with various uh, 12C27s, but I'm impressed by Sand Remus. So honestly, it's always been a very solid knife and one that knife collectors are, have always been aware of. And then we have the Sand Remu Land Model 810. Okay, This is a copy of a Chris Reeve Small Sabenza in 8CR 14 MOV steel. Beautiful frame lock, a little bit closer to the proper size of a Small Sabenza. And also copies the lines of a Small Sabenza a bit more than the 710 does. I will do a full video on this, don't worry. But these kind of show the different sizes they've offered. And then when we get up to the 910 slash 911 series, we can see this is copying the large Sebenza 21. So we have different options for everyone out there. Like super, like much smaller knives and are a bit more budget constrained, uh, go for the $15, $20 San Renu 710. Like, uh, you know, still small knives, but it gets a little bit bigger. Go for the about $22 Sanrenmu 810. 
And if you like medium sized knives, you know, which is the largest you're gonna get here, go for about the $23 to $25 Sanrim U910 slash 911 slash 912 slash 9103 slash whatever the hell model number they attach to it later. So, just wanted to go ahead and show off those before I got into the review too far. This may be a slightly longer one because I do have a lot to talk about. Before we jump into the blade, I do want to mention this is technically the third generation of Sanren U910. I believe the first ones were called the Mingren 910s, but they were made by Sanren U, and they had that little CRKT safety lock on the back. Uh, and they also, I believe, were... I think they were still made in 12C27 steel. And then the Generation 2s came out. I believe those were branded uh, either Land or Mingren. I think you could get them in both ways. They didn't have a little safety lock. They were in uh, HCR 14 MOV exclusively, I believe, and they had a more traditional style pocket clip, whereas this is using a more Sabenza type clip. They were using a clip that looked a bit more akin to what's on this Gonzo here. And then finally, we have the Generation 3, which is where we are today. And then maybe a Generation 4 that comes out sometime down the road. We don't know. I can only review what's in front of me, so that's what I'm going to try to do. And finally, jumping into the review, getting off my rambling, let's look at that blade. We have a very beautiful... Uh, I don't know if I'd call that a clipped point or a drop point. It's kind of... I'm going to say drop point. I'm going to say drop point. I could be wrong. But a beautiful blade shape, a very high flat grind, made out of Sandvik 12C27 steel. This thing is a slicer. It is an absolute machine. I use this to break down so much freaking cardboard alongside that uh, Enlin EL06 that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. And it performed admirably. I mean, this thing zipped through that cardboard like it was nothing. It cleared right through it. And, you know, yeah, it did dull. It absolutely dulled. I have yet to have a steel that wouldn't dull after that much cardboard breakdown. And I have owned a few a few knives that were in the, at the time, they were the high-end super steels. Now I guess they're uh, kind of middle-of-the-road steels. Things like S30V, which back in the day was the super steel. Uh, and back in the day was just a, just a few years back, six, seven, eight years back. And, you know, that would dull just like anything else when going through cardboard. So yeah, this dulled up, but it took that fine edge right back. I didn't even sharpen it, I just honed it. I just took it against a honing steel, and it put a razor sharp edge right back on this knife. And that is a huge upside to 12C27, is it takes a very fine edge, and it, it is incredibly easy to sharpen. It just won't hold that edge for the longest period of time. Uh, if you get a, you know, an, a poorly treated 12C27, it's going to perform like a 400 series stainless that's been poorly treated. If you get a, a decently treated uh, 12C27, it's going to perform somewhere in the level, in the range of a, a 420 high carbon from Buck, which is to say a bit below OS 8. And if you get a, a well heat treated 12C27, which in my opinion this one is, it's going to perform uh, a little bit above that 8CR 13 MOV uh, category. And I have a lot of use on 12C27. In fact, give me just one second. Uh, one of my most used knives has been a Mora Companion. This thing I beat the living hell out of. I mean, I've got a lot of wear and tear on this blade. As you can see, a lot of impromptu sharpening. Uh, I've beaten this knife to hell. So I'm, I'm quite familiar with 12C27. I think this is on the better end of it. Blade length is about 3.4 inches long. So a good medium sized blade length. Uh, could you use this for self-defense? Of course you could. You could use anything for self-defense, but this is long enough to give you a, a decent amount of reach if you felt the need to employ this in a self-defense situation. All right, but beautiful blade shape, beautiful cutting performance. Uh, I do believe that one of the versions of this knife has a stonewashed finish. This one is just a satin finished blade. You can see the branding here. We have the land logo on this side, the model number, and the steel on that side. We do have nicely uh, anodized blue thumb studs, which help bring the knife out lightning quick. This thing comes out super fast and locks up like a bank vault. No play in any direction that I can detect. And I believe this is riding on a ball bearing system at the pivot point because the action on this thing is just so incredibly smooth. Like, just glides. And I mean, it is a beautiful deploying knife. For the price point, it is far more than I would have expected. I mean, I remember uh, when the ball bearing system at the pivot point was a very big deal in the knife industry. And the only budget options that really had it were a couple of models from CRKT. So 
it's very cool to me for me to see this in such a budget knife. I know it's not as big of a deal anymore, but I do like how smooth that it is. And those thumb studs work extremely well. They are on both sides. So yes, lefties, you can absolutely deploy and carry this knife and use it comfortably. Before anyone says, well, it's a liner lock and liner locks are not lefty friendly, um, I hate to break this to you, but every lefty I've known has become just as used to pulling the liner towards them as righties are to pushing the liner away. Um, they grew up and they, their experience with liner locks and frame locks has always been pulling the lock towards themselves. My brother was a, a, is a lefty. Uh, that's the experience that he's had. That's the experience that many others that I've talked to have had. So while it may be natural for righties like myself to push the lock, lefties are very used to pulling it back. So yes, this is a fully ambidextrous knife, especially since it is a two -way, uh, two sided clip. You can carry it left or right hand side. Get to that later. Uh, jumping top side of the blade is very functional, locks the thumb in really, really nicely on this version anyways, bring that in. However, I suspect that if you got a stonewashed finished version, that may be a little bit slicker. That has been my experience with stonewashing on blades. In fact, the Model 810, which is virtually the exact same blade, just a bit smaller and in a different steel, is stonewashed, and that jimping is a bit smoother. You know, I can slide up and down that a bit more freely. So good jimping on the top side of the knife. Uh, one thing I want to say about the liner lock is it is uh, serrated or jimped in a way that allows it to grab your thumb, but it's very comfortable to disengage. And we have a nice, decently early lockup on this, so we have some wear that we can put on this before it begins to uh, push too far over to the side, I would imagine. But this is how you do a liner lock right. It provides just enough purchase that it's easy to, to actuate, and it's not a pain to disengage, unlike that Enlon EL06, which was just super sharp and very uncomfortable to disengage. Not a deal breaker, but it was a pain. This has none of those issues. By the way, the top of the spine is rounded, so if you like that nice premium touch, you know, it's not a huge deal, but many people like it, myself included. Uh, wait for this to focus. You see the centering there? Favors that right-hand side just a hair, but honestly not too bad. The liners are skeletonized on this side of the knife. Focus, there we go. So we have uh, shed some weight by doing that. Not so much on the other side, not so much on the liner lock side. But on the non-locking side, we have milled out those liners. And it's looking like 4.7 uh, 4 ounces is the weight. So San Remu did a good job with that. Uh, I wish the knife was a tiny bit lighter, but I'm not as concerned by the weight of my knives anymore. So it's no big deal. I mean, hell, I see a Schrade Shorelock fairly commonly that is a very hefty blade. Uh, in the hand, this thing is super comfortable. I mean, very, very comfortable. Uh, I'd never developed any hot spots with this, any blisters with this, even after a lot of cutting work. This thing is just a dream to handle. Handle material here is G10, as I mentioned before. The bl uh, green G10 has this uh, slightly more aggressive texturing. This is like really high traction G10. Uh, it reminds me a lot of both in terms of traction and in pattern to cold steel G10. Now the black version is going to be a bit more standard. It's going to resemble the more typical Chinese G10, like on this Kershaw Emerson here, that, that finer pattern. It's not nearly as abrasive. So, And this pattern, in my experience, is more prone to wearing down over time. Like You can see this one has. This is my buddy's knife. You can see how smooth that, that G10 has become over time. Uh, in my experience, this pattern holds up a bit better. So I do like the handle here. Very high traction. Probably about medium traction on the black version. We can see the hardware here. It looks like we're using Torx for the body. Nice anodized blue uh, lanyard barrel there. I love that. And it is actually a proper uh, barrel for that. It is actually a, uh, a sp what's the word I'm looking for on that, a pillar design. So you can fit your 550 cord through there easily without it kind of pushing off inside the liner and having to pull it back out and straighten it out and go through that little dance that we're all used to. Pocket clip, as I mentioned before, is right hand tip up carry by default. It can be switched over to the left hand side. No tip down carry, but that's not a huge deal. I would like to see that, but it's not the biggest deal that we don't have it. Because this is the position uh, most people prefer to carry it in anyways. Let's go ahead and bring in the pocket. Show how this carry is in the pocket. A little bit sticking out of the pocket, which I personally like. Gives me enough to grab onto and extract the knife. That is the way I like to see things. I have never been a fan of deep carry clips, so I personally like this, but you may not be the biggest fan of it. There are aftermarket clips online, by the way, which are sold uh, made out of titanium that have a stonewashed finish. So if you don't like this super bright satin finish, that is a way you could go. You could also just take this off and coat it or even just spray paint it if you really want to get that done quickly to give that a less um, reflective appearance. I don't personally care that much. 
Handle length, by the way, if I didn't mention, is 4.5 inches, so a nice medium size. It fits my hand quite well, and I do wear medium-sized gloves, so no complaints there. It is large enough for me, personally. Would I like to see them make an even bigger version? Sure. I mean, it wouldn't be mimicking any, any particular Sabenza design at that point, but more options, the better, you know? Make something for, make a, make a size for everyone. Make it like the Tenacious line, you know? We have the, the 710 would be like the Ambitious. The 810 would be like the Persistence. The 910 or 911 would be like the Tenacious. And then, I don't know, make like a 1010 that would be like the Resilience. I think that'd be pretty cool to see. Get just an even bigger option out there for the people who like really large self-defense tactical knives or tactical knives, that kind of thing, you know? Uh, but as it says, I think this is going to be adequate for the overwhelming majority of people. It is big enough to give you some reach if you had to employ it in a self-defense situation. Honestly, one thing I cannot believe is the price point on this. You can get these for about 23 US dollars, which is what I paid for mine. And for $23, this may be the best knife in that price range that I have ever owned. Genuinely, it may just be the best knife that I've ever owned in that price range. It beats the knives that I've owned in the $30 price range, in the $40 price range, many of them in the $50 price range, because it's not just about materials here. The quality on this, the fit and finish on this is solid. It's really solid for its price point. This feels like it could have been sold for significantly more, and no one would have batted an eye. You might make the argument, well, for a higher price tag these days, we can get a better steel than 12C27. And that's true, you can. Many knives these days are using better steels. Um, D2 is becoming very, very popular in a lot of areas, but I actually like the 12C27 a bit better than D2 for where I live, because here in Northeast Texas, it is humid as hell, and D2 rusts out like you wouldn't believe. So I actually like having this highly rust resistant steel. But yeah, you can get better edge performance in those higher, in that $30, $40, $50 price range these days. But it's not all about edge holding. Uh, so many people are caught up on their steels and their super steels and becoming steel snobs that they don't realize that you don't really need something like that. Unless you're using your knife heavily day in, day out, and I promise you over 90% of people watching these videos never are, unless they're going out of their way to do it for fun, you don't need that much of a steal for your everyday carry tasks. I mean, what are you doing with them? Opening up mail? Opening packages? Breaking down some cardboard boxes? Prepping food? Popping a string off your shirt? You know? Like, what are you actually doing? Maybe impromptu using it to cut a friend's cigar because you don't have a cigar cutter handy? Like, what are you... What are you really doing with your knife day in, day out that you need a super steel? For some people, they might have genuine answers. For most of you out there, you really don't. And the 12C27 in this is going to be very adequate for you. And more importantly, if you're not a good sharpener, not great at sharpening, this is super easy to sharpen and takes a wicked edge. So there is a pro to it, even when you compare it against the, uh, the super steels and the, and the harder steels. I mean, D2 is no super steel, but D2 is harder to sharpen than 12C27. It's not a hard steel to sharpen, but it is harder. So this is more uh, beginner friendly in that way and more casual friendly. And that is a thing worth talking about. You know, that is something that's absolutely worth bringing up. Uh, but yeah, I would call this better than the majority of knives I've owned in various price ranges. I, I like this much better than a Spider Cretinaceous. You know, I like this better than anything from the Gonzo line that I've had, and I love Gonzo knives. Here's one that I bring in all the time. I've done a review on this, the G738 in 440C. I love this knife. And I actually like the Gonzo blade steel a bit better. It holds an edge a little bit longer in my experience. Uh, not quite as easy to sharpen, but still very easy to sharpen, very rust resistant. But on the whole, I think this is slightly better made. This is a great knife. This is an amazing knife for the price range. So like, yeah, I would put this over pretty much anything, over the budget Kershaws, over the CRKTs, over the Gonzos, and uh, over the other San Remus, over the Enlands. But just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and do a comparison anyways to see, just to see what we can throw against it. Now, I still have this one here, uh, the Effen Grau EF55 that I originally owned and carried, tested, reviewed, gave away because I didn't like it very much. Uh, the buddy I gave it to has been uh, using it day in, day out. He loves the knife. He's not a knife guy, so he doesn't see a lot of the issues that I do with it. Uh, this claims to be a D2 steel. It's not. Love Them Knives proved, I believe it was Love Them Knives, proved in a test that this is actually, if I can get this to focus, come on, there you go. Claims to be D2 steel, but I believe in one of his videos he, he definitively proved this is HCR 13 MOV, so 
You know, slightly worse than edge holding to the San Renmu here. Super thick blade does not slice all that well. This is a copy of a Microtech. This is meant to be a super cool self-defense kind of thing, tactical kind of thing, but it has been employed in an, in an EDC role. But, you know, for the $20, price, $20, $30 price tag, look at this. These thumb studs are loose, and there's no way to really tighten those effectively. You need special tools to adjust everything on the body. Pocket clips coming loose. G10 handle is a bit squared. Not the most comfortable thing in the world. It's just not nearly as good of a knife. And I, I recently gave this a 6 out of 10 in terms of value. Going back on it, like seeing how it's held up, this is closer to a 5 out of 10 these days, guys. It's just not a very great knife. Uh, comparing that against the San Remu Land, I'll take the Land all day, every day. No competition whatsoever. How about the Enlin EL06 that I reviewed and compared side by side with the Land in testing? 9CR 18 MOV blade steel holds an edge just a bit better than the 12C27, but while it's also very easy to sharpen and takes a good edge, the 12C27 takes a better edge and is easier to sharpen. Hollow grind on this one also is somewhat thicker blade, so it doesn't slice as well as the San Renmu Land does. One-sided pocket, uh, one-sided thumb stud only, though you could swap that around in theory. In theory, it might be occluded by the handle a bit too much. G10 handle, tip-up carry clip only, right-hand position only. Price point, I paid about $18. This is a good knife, but this is a much better knife. The Land blows away the Enlin in every possible way, and I would pick it every day of the week. I brought in that Gonzo earlier, so let's bring that back in here. 440C blade, high flat grind, G10 handle, fully ambidextrous because we could swap that clip around. G-lock or axis lock, they can call it a G-lock, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing. Super comfortable in hand, great lockup, fantastic workhorse knife. This is a great knife, but the land's a bit better. Just the fit and finish is a bit better. I like this steel better. I like the fit and finish on this a bit better. This is also a little bit of a better slicer. This slices well, this slices incredibly. So, great knife. Amazing knife. Good knife. Let's bring in a few more things here. I talk about this one pretty frequently, the Schrade SCH 503 Shorelock. I love this knife. I've thumped the hell out of this thing, and it's still trucking, no play. AUS 8 steel blade on this one, uh, so it holds an edge a little bit worse than that 12C27. Nice mid-flat grind, shore lock for the locking mechanism, which is just a lot of fun to actuate. Right hand tip-up carry clip only. Price range on these, I believe these are discontinued, but they're still all over eBay as the time of as the, the time of this video, for about twenty bucks, twenty-five bucks. Love this knife. Carry this knife all the time. This is a better knife. Okay, this is definitely a better knife. This is a more heavy-duty knife. You can thump this more than you could this, but this is a better overall quality knife. And the last one I'm going to show here is just an interesting one because this is also discontinued. This is the Kershaw Nerve. Uh, I loved this knife back in the day. This was a great blade. This was like, you know, it wasn't quite as good as the Tenacious for what it was, but it was a solid knife. Genuinely a solid knife from Kershaw. And it represents kind of a bygone era of what used to be the average $25 high-value high, high value budget Chinese knife. I feel like it's a good depiction. We have that nice milled G10 handle there. Bead Blasted 8CR 13 MOV Blade in RJ Martin design, made in China. Liner lock, thumb disc deployment, comes out nice and fast. I believe this is riding on, is it Teflon or Phosphor Bronze? I'll pull this off camera so I can get a better look. Looks like Phosphor Bronze washers in that pivot point. A right hand tip up carry clip only. This is a great example of what budget knives were like, you know, eight years ago. This is a good knife, it really is. It's a solid, a solid blade. This is better in pretty much every category, okay? This is decently comfortable, but it does have some sharp edges. This, no complaints. This steel won't rust on you. 8CR 13 MOV, especially when paired with beat blasting, will rust on you. Handle materials are identical in te uh, technically because they're both G10. Liner lock, bit better on the San Renmu. Deployment, bit better on the San Renmu because it just comes out so smooth thanks to that ball bearing system. This is a good knife, but I think the land goes to show just how much better budget blades have become as time has gone on. So that has been my review on the San Ren Yu Model 911-910, because they're basically the same knife. 
Uh, if you're on the fence about this one and you're looking for a great budget everyday carry knife that can get the job done, resist rust like no other, and be very easy to sharpen, you will not go be disappointed with this. You cannot go wrong with this. It is a fantastic blade for not very much money at all. Run out, buy yourself one, hell, buy yourself three. Buy yourself every version of it that exists because it is very much worth the money. In terms of value, I'll say it right now, this is a 10 out of 10. This is a super good knife for the money and I have not seen better in its price range ever. So, hopefully that has helped someone out there who is curious about this knife and wanted to know whether or not it was worth picking up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, peace and I will see you later.